Hello, my name is Magdalena Proszowska and welcome to 10 minute tutorial where I will show you the process of painting a stylized portrait. Before I started painting I created a three very quick sketches. They took me about 5-10 minutes uh, with different compositions, with different ideas that I would like to create and from, and from those I choose one that I like the most. My next step is to take the sketch and polish it uh, to the better version. So I add more details, I place the line art more carefully, uh, just to push it to a state where I am sure uh, I um, figure out all, all the uh, basic problems of the anatomy. You can see that not everything what is on the sketch will be later uh, visible in the final painting, so it's not a sketch that I am extremely attached to, it's still work in progress and I will change it uh, while painting a few times. Even on this stage I am still thinking about the details, I first uh, draw in those big earrings in the shape of stars but later remove them. Unfortunately my recording crashed when I was putting the first colors and that's the first step I have uh, for you to see how my first colors look like. In short, my first step is always to fill the whole canvas with a one color. I don't like to start just from the white, I like to start with a color that will harmonize the whole composition. And for this picture I went for uh, this pale orange uh, color as a background and then I slowly with a very big brush starts to build up the color composition of the whole picture, not yet thinking about the details at all. Um, and the details is something that I will get into after I am uh, happy with the a big picture, how the colors uh, works together. I will come back later to some elements, for example, I didn't uh, paint the hands at the very beginning, so I needed to go back to the sketch and really think about the composition of the hands uh, and draw them in first as a sketch and later I can uh, using the sketch color it correctly. You might notice that I am flipping canvas horizontally, it really helps me to refresh the uh, my vision at the picture and uh, I also see better the symmetry uh, issues if I place something in a wrong a spot on the left or right side. If I flip the canvas it really helps me uh, to see it with the fresh eyes. Or even I will flip it upside down when I really want to just focus on the composition of the colors and shades, not on the details. I try to not paint in a one spot for a very long time. I rather uh, try to uh, jump all around the picture, um, paint slightly here and slightly there and let the whole picture develop at the same time. Thanks to that I will not make a mistake that I will over render just part of the picture and later after zooming out notice that oh my gosh it completely doesn't fit the rest of the face. I don't really paint zoom in, not at the early stage of the painting. I try to work on the zoom out as long as is possible with as big brushes as it is possible. It is very tempting to start just painting the details because those are the most interesting to do, uh, but it my painting as a whole will really suffer if I will just focus on the details. This painting is the type uh, where the idea is developed in the middle. Uh, the idea for the butterflies and the yellow eyes uh, was something that I got in the middle of the painting. Uh, it's not always how I approach my drawings. Uh, other times I have the full idea developed before I will even place the first colors uh, that I actually have everything thought through uh, in the sketch state. But it's not always the case. And for her, the whole personality and charisma, I really created in the halfway through the painting. And you will see uh, forward that I uh, also will change a lot in her emotional state on the face. Uh, I thought that she looked slightly too innocent. I wanted to give her slight attitude. 
uh, so uh, you will see me changing and the expression uh, in her eyes and uh, a smile. The choosing the color is not an accident. Uh, the violet and the yellow color are the complementary color and it's uh, something that um, I did at the very beginning of the picture. This is the color palette that I choose and um, with the um, picture coming together uh, I uh, notice more occasion to really exaggerate uh, the uh, contrast between those colors. So for example her eyes really um, look intense because they are uh, surrounded by the violets um, and the whole gradation from violets at the top to the yellow at the bottom uh, it's intentional. I make those decisions right now very intuitively um, but uh, before I had the skill uh, I uh, very often started with the color compositions so I m took my first sketch and make it uh, in three to five different color versions before I will uh, decide which one is uh, uh, looking the best. But the more you paint, the more things uh, you really feel with your guts and you know by the first instance that okay, this is our right way of doing it. I will quite often separate the picture to the layers. It's always safer and if you are not sure of the effect uh, what you want to paint, it's always better to start on a new layer and if you see it's nothing good, you can always hide it uh, without losing the whole process uh, of the painting that you have below. Uh, so uh, elements like the glitter here, almost everything I painted on the separate layers. And quite often I use the selection tool where I want to have a very uh, hard edged um, structures and um, uh, achieve a very quick effect. I will just grab a selection tool, draw the shapes with the selection tool and color them uh, inside the selection. From the technical side I am using a Wacom Cintiq 24 HD. I am using a special pen for painting, it's called Art Pen and you can get it in any Wacom store that supports rotation of the pen and a lot of brushes in Corel uh, do have support for it so many of them rotate with the rotation of the pen and it's really nice to paint with that. Now I start the correction of the uh, gesture of the face and uh, so I will grab just a selection to select the elements that I want to move like for example I want to raise the eyebrows so I will cut them from the main part of the picture move them, rotate them, place them in the correct place um, and uh, paint uh, them in so there is no visible edge. Together with this video soon there will be additional videos showing my process of painting a face features so you can see in details how I approach a painting a specific, a specific objects on the same picture. Everything step by step. So you can see here that the butterflies I had on a separate layer so I didn't have to care much about the hair. They uh, stayed there on the lower level painted as they are and I could move the butterflies around without um, being afraid that that will uh, destroy any part of the painting. I don't really use a lot of the effects of the layers. Sometimes I will use multiply if I want to darken the shadows or I will use any of the uh, lightning effects um, to add a glow uh, like overlay layer or a screen layer but nothing really extreme. As soon as you start introducing those elements and you will not be consistent and have them on the whole picture, they will really stick out. So you need to be careful where and how you apply it. I like when my paintings have a more traditional feel uh, to the extent when I uh, see that I need to fix something instead of using a, a quick uh, a way of doing it, transforming it or using some kind of effects to fix it, I would rather just overpaint it again. Um, it might take more time but I ma like the effect much more. The whole picture I painted with maybe three to five brushes. I really don't use that many more. I feel the less brushes I use the more consistent whole picture is. A few final touches and I am completely done with the whole painting. 
Hope you enjoy it and have a great day.